Every day, you can see things being lifted. You pick up your coffee cup in the morning. Picking up a child. A window is lifted for fresh air. Most lifting occurs without us even thinking about it. But there are types of lifting that take knowledge and skill. A weightlifter practices for many hours with a trainer. Lifting is a big part of what happens at a marine cargo handling facility. Rubber-tired gantry cranes, also known as RTGs, hoist and move hundreds of cargo containers every day. To operate one of these big machines, you need training and practice. This program is part one of a two-part series on the safe operation of rubber-tired gantry cranes. In this program, you will be introduced to the characteristics of this marvel, where it operates on the terminal and how it functions. Next, you'll learn the basic layout of a terminal. General safety guidelines will be discussed, as well as specific guidelines on what to know and do before operating an RTG. After learning about the pre-operation inspection, we'll get you in the operator's cab. Lastly, we'll cover how you will communicate with ground personnel and others while working in an RTG. Part two will introduce you to operating the RTG and load handling. We'll teach you how to lift and carry loads, and how to land and stack containers. You will also learn how to deliver containers to trucks, and how to handle other types of cargo, such as overheight and tank containers. We'll explain how to shut down your RTG at the end of your shift. And finally, we'll discuss safety and emergency procedures. Rubber-tired gantry crane. That's a mouthful. Big equipment with a big name and a big job. Rubber-tired gantry cranes are efficient machines that are an important part of terminal operations. RTGs are also known as transtainers, which is a registered trademark of the Paseco Corporation. But what exactly is an RTG? It's a mobile diesel electric bridge crane that is used for moving and transferring containers. RTGs work in specifically designed areas of a container yard. They may also load and unload containers to and from rail cars. RTGs share certain characteristics with two other pieces of equipment that you will see on the marine terminal. The shoreside container gantry crane and the straddle carrier. The shoreside container gantry crane is much larger than the RTG and is used only for loading containers to and discharging containers from ships. It is mounted on rails and will only be found on the dock. While both hoist containers with a spreader in a similar manner, the RTG has a wider range of movement because it can travel on its rubber tires. The RTG is also similar to the straddle carrier, or strad for short, but differs in a few ways. The RTG is larger than a strad, which can span only one container. RTGs can span several container rows. A strad can only lift a container up and down, while the RTG can move a container up and down and forward and back over rows of containers. This forward and back movement is called trolleying. Unlike the RTG, the Strad can work in more than one area of the terminal. For instance, Strads can deliver containers to or receive containers from the shoreside container gantry crane, while the RTG has a designated area just for its own use and never approaches a ship. This designated area where the RTG operates is referred to as the pad. The pad is a specially designed area of the terminal where the work surfaces have been reinforced to sustain the weight of stacked containers as well as the RTG. Terminals usually have more than one pad, 
and they're typically lined up side by side and end to end in a grid pattern. Each pad is made up of the container stack, two travel runways, and the truck lane. The container stack consists of containers stored end to end and in rows approximately three to six wide, depending on the RTGs in use. Each row can be from three to over 60 containers long, determined by the terminal configuration. Depending on the RTG used, each row can be up to six containers high. Rows are organized parallel to each other. Stacking containers squarely, corner to corner, is extremely important here, since a misaligned container can affect the positioning of the containers above and beside it. Every pad has lane markings to indicate the runways on which the RTG travels when performing its functions. These paths run parallel to the container stack. The term used to describe the left and right parallel movement of the RTG along the runways is called gantrying. Gantrying is also known as long travel. The truck lane is located on one side of the pad, between one runway and the stack. The truck lane is clearly marked to indicate where trucks will pull in to receive or deliver a container. RTG wheels should never cross those lines. RTGs must remain on the reinforced runways to avoid sinking in the asphalt truck lanes. Some RTGs are equipped with an automatic shutoff sensory device that stops the machine if it comes too close to an object or vehicle. But you should never rely on this device to keep you and others safe. You've learned that RTGs can gantry left and right on the runways, but they can also turn their wheels 90 degrees and travel. This movement is called cross-travel. RTGs cross-travel so they can move to work other pads. This feature makes the RTG both practical and efficient. In order to cross-travel or gantry, you'll need to select the proper steering mode. RTGs have two steering modes that are changed using the steering mode selector switch located in the cab. The first steering mode is zero degrees, sometimes called the normal mode. This setting allows the RTG to gantry. The second steering mode is 90 degrees, sometimes called the transverse travel mode. This setting turns the wheels 90 degrees, which allows the RTG to cross travel. The turning areas for the RTG are at the end of the stack at lanes called intersections. Intersections are where the RTG can turn its wheels 90 degrees and travel at right angles to the stack. While some RTGs are capable of turning around 360 degrees, this is rarely done. One other area where RTGs work is the rail yard. Just like the pad, the work surface at a rail yard where RTGs operate must be reinforced to handle the weight of the RTG and stacked containers. Runways and truck lanes are also clearly marked at the rail yard. Like in the container yard, RTGs must remain on the reinforced runways. RTGs can be as tall as 85 feet. The main frame of the RTG is composed of two large main girders with leg columns at either end. The leg columns are identified by their location, the right front leg column and right rear leg column, and the left front leg column and left rear leg column. The front and rear right leg columns are braced at the bottom by the right sill beam, and the front and rear left leg columns are braced at the bottom by the left sill beam. An integral part of the crane is the diesel alternator engine. Since the RTG is mobile and cannot be plugged into power cables while operating, it must supply its own electrical power. This power supply comes from the diesel engine which can be located above or below one of the sill beams. The electrical equipment panel, or electrical equipment room, controls the electrical power and can be located on the same side as the engine above the sill beam or above the opposite sill beam. Wheel assemblies, known as wheel trucks or bogies, support the entire structure of the RTG. Wheel trucks house the tires. 
RTGs can have from four to 16 tires up to four per wheel truck, which are equally distributed on either side of the crane. The four-wheeled type, that's one wheel per corner, is being phased out in favor of more advanced models. The operator's cab is positioned high on the crane. To reach the cab, you will climb up the access ladder and stairways and walk along the work access platform. The RTG's cab has been designed to give you maximum visibility. Windows allow you to see in many directions, even below. The cab is where you will carry out the movements and functions of the RTG, such as gantrying, trolleying, hoisting, lowering, and spreader adjustments. Hoisting is the term for the raising movement of the spreader. Trolleying is the movement used to position the spreader over a container. When an RTG trolleys, the cab and spreader move forward and back between the right leg columns and the left leg columns. Trolley is also the name of the mechanism that allows the cab and spreader to move along the top girders of the RTG. The cab and the spreader are suspended from the trolley mechanism, with the spreader slightly forward of the cab. The spreader is the part of the RTG that engages, lifts, and moves containers. It is suspended from the trolley and raised and lowered by wire hoist ropes. Motors power the hoist drums around which the wire hoist ropes are wound. The wire hoist ropes are let out or brought in depending on whether the spreader is being lowered or raised. The spreader consists of several components. Spreader beams retract and extend to adjust to the size of the container, which can be 20, 40, or 45 feet long. Flipper arms are located at each corner of the spreader, one flipper per corner. They're used to guide the spreader onto a container. The pairs of flippers on each end of the spreader are operated separately. Twist locks are also located on each corner of the spreader. These mechanisms fit and lock into the upper four corner fittings on a container. The spreader is adjustable in other ways besides retracting and extending. These other adjustments allow for flexibility when engaging containers. List is when the spreader tilts to one side. List controls allow the spreader to correct this tilt. Trim controls allow the spreader to adjust for the container's position. Skew is an adjustment to allow the spreader to engage a container that is out of alignment. Typically, the spreader can be rotated plus or minus five degrees to make fine adjustments before landing on a container. This may be necessary if containers are not properly aligned parallel to the crane when stacked or when a truck is not properly aligned. When operating an RTG, you must know its limits, such as lifting capacity. Lifting capacity is the safe working load that the RTG can handle. This capacity is clearly marked on the machine. Never exceed the rated capacity of the RTG. In addition, wind speed limits are set for the safe operation of the RTG. Because there are several manufacturers of RTGs, each model will vary from another. You will be trained on the particular model that you will operate. Read and familiarize yourself with the operator's manual and manufacturer's recommendations. Knowing your machine will greatly enhance safety and efficiency. Trucks, work vehicles, equipment, pedestrians, audible alarm sound. To the untrained observer, the marine terminal can be overwhelming. To better understand this environment, let's discuss certain features common to most marine cargo handling facilities. At the entrance of the terminal is the gate complex where motor carriers enter to pick up or deliver cargo. Containers and chassis are identified, verified, and inspected here. At the water side of the terminal, you will find berths. This is where ships are secured to the dock or moored. The land side area adjacent to the berth is referred to as the dock, wharf, or pier. 
there may be several berths along the dock. The container yard is where containers discharged from a vessel and containers to be loaded on a vessel are brought. Each terminal has its own procedures for storing containers. Some terminals have wheeled operations areas where containers are stored on chassis. Other terminals stack their containers on the ground. That's referred to as grounded operations. And some terminals might have both wheeled and grounded operations areas. RTGs operate only in grounded areas. There are also areas at the terminal designated for certain cargo, such as hazardous materials and specialized cargo. Refrigerated or reefer cargo has separate storage areas. A reefer is a container with a diesel generator that can produce its own power, if not near a power source, in order to maintain a desired temperature in the container. Reefer pedestals, also called outlet stations, supply electrical power and are strategically located in the reefer area. A reefer can get power without use of its diesel electric generator by being hooked up to a reefer pedestal. It is necessary for you to know the layout and the workflow or traffic flow patterns at your facility. In terminals that use RTGs, when a container arrives by ship and is removed by the shoreside container gantry crane, the container is then moved by a yard tractor or container handler to the pad area where the RTG stacks it. At the terminal, there are special routes for motor carriers, equipment handlers, and other drivers to follow, as well as designated walkways for anyone traveling on foot. Know these traffic patterns, which will be clearly marked. Safety is always the first priority at marine cargo handling facilities. Operating an RTG takes a lot of training and practice, but before you set foot in the cab of an RTG, be sure to have your personal safety in check. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, has issued regulations for the safe operations of RTGs. You may not operate an RTG if you have uncorrected impaired vision or hearing, or if you suffer from heart disease, epilepsy, or any similar ailment that could suddenly incapacitate you. Your local port may have other qualifications that you must satisfy in order to operate an RTG. Never operate an RTG while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. If you're taking prescribed medications, you must be cleared to operate an RTG. Appropriate terminal dress is required and includes shirt, pants, and work shoes. Personal protective equipment or PPE may be required for pedestrians or people working in certain locations. This PPE may include a hard hat, reflective vest, and safety shoes. For instance, if you dismount your crane and enter a pedestrian walkway, you are required to wear a reflective vest. If you're walking under the crane, you must wear a hard hat. You will be instructed on any other PPE requirements. Cell phones, music, and personal entertainment devices are all dangerous distractions and are not permitted on the job. Books, newspapers, and food are also prohibited. Your full attention is needed when operating the RTG. Be alert at all times. Along with following safety guidelines, you must also follow the work schedule for your shift. Your supervisor will provide this information before each shift. You probably know that with a complex piece of machinery like the RTG, you can't just get into it, start the engine, and drive off like you would a car. A pre-operation inspection needs to be conducted. At most terminals, the pre-op inspection is conducted by maintenance personnel, but you should be aware of what they do to ensure the smooth operation of the machine. During a pre-op inspection, the mechanic performs several visual and mechanical checks. Oil levels are checked, as well as the engine crankcase and hydraulic reservoir. Radiator coolant and fuel levels, which must be at full, are checked. 
the mechanic will also look for any fluid leaks. Tire condition is important. The mechanic should view them from a distance to get a better perspective. Next, wheel guards and structural joints are checked. Fasteners should not be loose or missing. Structural members should not be twisted, bent, or out of place. If anything seems out of place, the mechanic will immediately report it to a foreman. When RTGs are not in use, they are parked. In order for the machine to be put back in service, maintenance personnel must go through procedures to prepare the RTG. While parked, the RTG is secured with turnbuckles attached to runway cleats. The wheels are chopped and or the sets of tires are positioned perpendicular to each other to keep the machine from moving. Maintenance personnel remove securing devices prior to operation. They will also unplug shore cables or ground plugs used to provide auxiliary power for the motor heaters and climate control system. In most facilities, maintenance personnel start RTGs. If RTG operators start their machines at your facility, your local training will instruct you on appropriate starting procedures. Once the engine is started and no problems have been determined, you are ready to begin operations. However, like an airline pilot, the final check is yours. So, before you begin your climb up the cab, you should perform the following visual checks yourself. Look at the condition of the tires. Check the wheel guards. Make sure the RTG is untied or the wheel chocks have been removed. Check to see if the RTG has been unplugged from its power source. Always look for fluid leaks, since they might signal a problem. Look around the pad for obstructions, such as debris, people, cargo, equipment, or parked vehicles. Do not attempt to access the cab unless it is unoccupied. If it is occupied, establish communication with the person in the cab to find out when the cab will be free. Now you're ready to enter the crane. Remember, you're heading up to the cab located near the top of the RTG. And you get there by climbing a ladder and stairs. Be cautious while climbing. Always use a three-point mount and dismount. This means that there will always be three points of contact between you and the ladder, either two feet and one hand, or two hands and one foot. Make certain the ladder and stairs are not slippery from rain, oil, or moisture, and that your work shoes are clean. Plan enough time to stop and take a rest if needed. It's a long way up. If you're carrying items, they must fit in your pockets or tool belt. Any item too large must be lifted and lowered by using a hand line. Use extreme caution in bad weather. Ice, wind, and rain can pose serious threats. Once you arrive at the access walkway platform, it's time to enter the operator's cab. Inspect the cab looking for debris on the floor that could obstruct your vision or impede safe operation. Clean the windshield if needed and check the fire extinguisher to see that it is fully charged. Next, sit comfortably in the seat. If the crane is equipped with seat belts or harnesses, use them properly. The operator's seat is positioned in the cab so that the operator faces the forward trolley direction. However, safe and efficient operation requires the operator to look around in all directions. The seat can swivel for this purpose. In the cab, you will find many controls. The left and right operator control consoles contain the gantry or drive control lever, the trolley control lever, flipper controls, skew adjustment, spreader controls, the hoist control lever, twist locks, lock and unlock switch, and the diesel on and off switch. A panel in the cab contains controls for steering modes, windshield wipers, defogger, floodlights, as well as other controls. Also located in the cab, you will find a horn and the twist lock indicator lights which tell you when the spreader is positioned properly over a container and whether the twist locks are locked or unlocked. One of the most important switches you need to be familiar with is the emergency stop button. 
there is one emergency stop button located in the cab. This is a large red button located on the right control console. There are also two emergency stop buttons located on the ground on either side of the crane. Use the emergency stop buttons in emergency situations only. Before you begin any work, conduct an equipment check. Be thorough, your safety is depending on it. First, turn on the control power to the cab. Next, check all crane motion controls for proper operation. These are located on the control levers, commonly known as joysticks. Check the RTG's drive functions first. These include gantry, forward and reverse trolley, and spreader hoist and lower. Next, cycle the spreader through its functions. Extend and retract it and move the flippers up and down. Report any problems you discover. The communication systems on RTGs are vital to your safety. It is your direct line to your co-workers. Check the two-way radio to make sure you have contact with terminal personnel. Is the cab speaker working? What about the external loudspeaker? Some RTGs are equipped with computers. If so, make certain the monitor is on and the display panel is operative. The LCD monitor will give a readout of any functions that need attention. However, this does not take the place of your visual checks. Before operating an RTG, you should also know your particular machine's blind spots. Some RTGs have video cameras to help with ground level visibility. If so, make sure the camera is operable. Continue your check by testing the work and drive lights. Also, check all warning devices. The horn, audible travel alarms, and warning lights must all be operational. Don't forget to check the windshield wipers. Observe your work environment from the cab. Make sure there are no obstructions. The pad area must be clear before proceeding with any movement. Now is the time to check the RTG's gantry braking and steering. RTGs have two braking systems, parking and internal drive brakes. Parking brakes are for holding the crane when it is not moving. They're not used to stop the machine. They're engaged when the gantry control lever is in the neutral position and disengaged when the control lever begins acceleration. The RTG's drive brakes are operated differently than a car's brakes, which use a foot pedal to activate a mechanism that directly stops the wheels. Instead, braking an RTG is a function of stopping drive motors that have been started. The drive motors are stopped when the gantry control lever returns to the neutral position after being engaged. This causes a deceleration or slowing down of the drive motors to zero speed or stop. The RTG's wheels stop because they are not receiving power from the motors. However, the RTG will drift after the control lever is returned to neutral position. All operators must be aware of this, and they should know the distance the machine they're operating takes to come to a full stop from various speeds. The stopping distance or drift will be longer depending on the speed the machine was traveling before the gantry control lever was returned to neutral. To test the braking function, move the control lever to slowly gantry the machine in either a right or left direction, and then Bring the machine to full speed. Return the control lever to the neutral position and determine the distance of the machine's drift. Generally, this drift is between 10 and 15 feet, but each machine will have its own normal drift that you should know. If the machine does not stop within its normal drift, there could be a problem and appropriate personnel should be notified. When stopping an RTG, it is always important to remember that they don't stop like a car or even other container handling equipment. Because of their size and weight, RTGs require a greater distance to stop. Be sure to allow this distance to avoid accidents. You also need to check near and far steering before you start operations. 
Near steering refers to the wheels that are just behind the cab when the cab is above the truck lane. Far steering refers to the wheels at the opposite end of the RTG. To check near and far steering alignment, slowly accelerate the RTG into a right or left gantry motion. Near and far steering are checked by engaging the selector switch to determine if the wheels are properly responding and that they are aligned properly in the runway. Look for any movement that indicates that the wheels are not moving parallel to the runways and container stack. Return the control lever to the neutral position to stop the RTG and perform the check on the other side. If the wheels are veering off the runway, the steering is out of alignment and you should stop the machine by returning the gantry control lever to the neutral position and report the misalignment. If the near and far steering responds properly, you are good to go. Before you begin operations, there is important information that you should know about communication. Communication is absolutely vital for smooth and safe operations on a marine terminal. Stay in constant contact with ground personnel. They are the eyes on the ground that you do not have from your vantage point. Learn and know all the proper hand signals ground personnel use. The following hand signals are recognized by the ANSI B-30 standard. Lower. The arm is extended downward with one finger drawing a small circle toward the ground. Raise or hoist. The forearm is vertical with one finger pointing up and drawing a small circle on the sky. Stop. The arm is extended palm down and moved back and forth horizontally. Gantry travel. The arm is extended forward with the hand open and slightly raised, making a pushing motion in the direction of travel. Trolley travel. The hand is closed and the thumb points in the direction of travel. The hand is jerked horizontally. Move slowly. The other hand is placed in front of the normal signal. Emergency stop. Both arms are extended, palms down, and moved back and forth horizontally. Whenever possible, the signal person should signal using bare hands. However, in cold weather, your signal person may need to wear gloves. Although light-covered or high-visibility gloves are preferred, the signal person may wear dark gloves as long as the crane operator can clearly see the hand signals being communicated. If you are ever unclear as to what is being signaled at any time, stop the crane and ask for clarification. If anyone signals a stop, even someone not in your ground crew, do so immediately. The two-way radio is not for general conversation. It's to be used for operation communication only. Clear communication is the key to smooth and safe operations. The rubber-tire gantry crane is one of the largest, most impressive pieces of lifting equipment you'll see at a marine cargo handling facility. Operating one safely and efficiently takes training and practice. With today's training, you're on your way to becoming a knowledgeable RTG operator. In this program, we learn the characteristics of the RTG and the pad, how the RTG functions, and the basic layout of the terminal. We discuss general safety guidelines, as well as specific guidelines on what to know and do prior to operating an RTG. We learned what is included in a pre-operation inspection. And lastly, we discussed the importance of communication. RTGs are productive, versatile, and massive machines. As an operator of one of these impressive machines, you have a big responsibility. By being dedicated and working safely, you ensure that the cargo America needs keeps moving, day in and day out.
You probably know that with a complex piece of machinery like the RTG, you can't just get into it, start the engine, and drive off like you would a car. A pre-operation inspection needs to be conducted. At most terminals, the pre-op inspection is conducted by maintenance personnel, but you should be aware of what they do to ensure the smooth operation of the machine. During a pre-op inspection, the mechanic performs several visual and mechanical checks. Oil levels are checked, as well as the engine crankcase and hydraulic reservoir. Radiator coolant and fuel levels, which must be at full, are checked. The mechanic will also look for any fluid leaks. Tire condition is important. The mechanic should view them from a distance to get a better perspective. Next, wheel guards and structural joints are checked. Fasteners should not be loose or missing. Structural members should not be twisted, bent, or out of place. If anything seems out of place, the mechanic will immediately report it to a foreman. When RTGs are not in use, they are parked. In order for the machine to be put back in service, maintenance personnel must go through procedures to prepare the RTG. While parked, the RTG is secured with turnbuckles attached to runway cleats. The wheels are chopped, and or the sets of tires are positioned perpendicular to each other to keep the machine from moving. Maintenance personnel remove securing devices prior to operation. They will also unplug shore cables or ground plugs used to provide auxiliary power for the motor heaters and climate control system. In most facilities, maintenance personnel start RTGs. If RTG operators start their machines at your facility, your local training will instruct you on appropriate starting procedures. Once the engine is started and no problems have been determined, you are ready to begin operations. However, like an airline pilot, the final check is yours. So before you begin your climb up the cab, you should perform the following visual checks yourself. Look at the condition of the tires. Check the wheel guards. Make sure the RTG is untied or the wheel chocks have been removed. Check to see if the RTG has been unplugged from its power source. Always look for fluid leaks, since they might signal a problem. Look around the pad for obstructions, such as debris, people, cargo, equipment, or parked vehicles. Do not attempt to access the cab unless it is unoccupied. If it is occupied, establish communication with the person in the cab to find out when the cab will be free. Now you're ready to enter the crane. Remember, you're heading up to the cab located near the top of the RTG. And you get there by climbing a ladder and stairs. Be cautious while climbing. Always use a three-point mount and dismount. This means that there will always be three points of contact between you and the ladder, either two feet and one hand, or two hands and one foot. Make certain the ladder and stairs are not slippery from rain, oil, or moisture, and that your work shoes are clean. Plan enough time to stop and take a rest if needed. It's a long way up. If you're carrying items, they must fit in your pockets or tool belt. Any item too large must be lifted and lowered by using a hand line. Use extreme caution in bad weather. Ice, wind, and rain can pose serious threats. Once you arrive at the access walkway platform, it's time to enter the operator's cab. Inspect the cab looking for debris on the floor that could obstruct your vision or impede safe operation. Clean the windshield if needed, and check the fire extinguisher to see that it is fully charged. Next, sit comfortably in the seat. If the crane is equipped with seat belts or harnesses, use them properly. The operator's seat is positioned in the cab so that the operator faces the forward trolley direction. However, safe and efficient operation requires the operator to look around in all directions. The seat can swivel for this purpose. In the cab, you will find many controls. The left and right operator control consoles contain the gantry or drive control lever, the trolley control lever, flipper controls, 
skew adjustment, spreader controls, the hoist control lever, twist locks, lock and unlock switch, and the diesel on and off switch. A panel in the cab contains controls for steering modes, windshield wipers, defogger, floodlights, as well as other controls. Also located in the cab, you will find a horn and the twist lock indicator lights, which tell you when the spreader is positioned properly over a container and whether the twist locks are locked or unlocked. One of the most important switches you need to be familiar with is the emergency stop button. There is one emergency stop button located in the cab. This is a large red button located on the right control console. There are also two emergency stop buttons located on the ground on either side of the crane. Use the emergency stop buttons in emergency situations only. Before you begin any work, conduct an equipment check. Be thorough, your safety is depending on it. First, turn on the control power to the cab. Next, check all crane motion controls for proper operation. These are located on the control levers, commonly known as joysticks. Check the RTG's drive functions first. These include gantry, forward and reverse trolley, and spreader hoist and lower. Next, cycle the spreader through its functions. Extend and retract it and move the flippers up and down. Report any problems you discover. The communication systems on RTGs are vital to your safety. It is your direct line to your co-workers. Check the two-way radio to make sure you have contact with terminal personnel. Is the cab speaker working? What about the external loudspeaker? Some RTGs are equipped with computers. If so, make certain the monitor is on and the display panel is operative. The LCD monitor will give a readout of any functions that need attention. However, this does not take the place of your visual checks. Before operating an RTG, you should also know your particular machine's blind spots. Some RTGs have video cameras to help with ground level visibility. If so, make sure the camera is operable. Continue your check by testing the work and drive lights. Also, check all warning devices. The horn, audible travel alarms, and warning lights must all be operational. Don't forget to check the windshield wipers. Observe your work environment from the cab. Make sure there are no obstructions. The pad area must be clear before proceeding with any movement. Now is the time to check the RTG's gantry braking and steering. RTGs have two braking systems, parking and internal drive brakes. Parking brakes are for holding the crane when it is not moving. They're not used to stop the machine. They're engaged when the gantry control lever is in the neutral position and disengaged when the control lever begins acceleration. The RTG's drive brakes are operated differently than a car's brakes, which use a foot pedal to activate a mechanism that directly stops the wheels. Instead, braking an RTG is a function of stopping drive motors that have been started. The drive motors are stopped when the gantry control lever returns to the neutral position after being engaged. This causes a deceleration or slowing down of the drive motors to zero speed or stop. The RTG's wheels stop because they are not receiving power from the motors. However, the RTG will drift after the control lever is returned to neutral position. All operators must be aware of this, and they should know the distance the machine they are operating takes to come to a full stop from various speeds. The stopping distance or drift will be longer depending on the speed the machine was traveling before the gantry control lever was returned to neutral. To test the braking function, move the control lever to slowly gantry the machine in either a right or left direction, and then bring the machine to full speed. Return the control lever to the neutral position and determine the distance of the machine's drift. Generally, this drift is between 10 and 15 feet, but 
Each machine will have its own normal drift that you should know. If the machine does not stop within its normal drift, there could be a problem and appropriate personnel should be notified. When stopping an RTG, it is always important to remember that they don't stop like a car or even other container handling equipment. Because of their size and weight, RTGs require a greater distance to stop. Be sure to allow this distance to avoid accidents. You also need to check near and far steering before you start operations. Near steering refers to the wheels that are just behind the cab when the cab is above the truck lane. Far steering refers to the wheels at the opposite end of the RTG. To check near and far steering alignment, slowly accelerate the RTG into a right or left gantry motion. Near and far steering are checked by engaging the selector switch to determine if the wheels are properly responding and that they are aligned properly in the runway. Look for any movement that indicates that the wheels are not moving parallel to the runways and container stack. Return the control lever to the neutral position to stop the RTG and perform the check on the other side. If the wheels are veering off the runway, the steering is out of alignment and you should stop the machine by returning the gantry control lever to the neutral position and report the misalignment. If the near and far steering responds properly, you are good to go. Before you begin operations, there is important information that you should know about communication. Communication is absolutely vital for smooth and safe operations on a marine terminal. Stay in constant contact with ground personnel. They are the eyes on the ground that you do not have from your vantage point. Learn and know all the proper hand signals ground personnel use. The following hand signals are recognized by the ANSI B-30 standard. Lower, the arm is extended downward with one finger drawing a small circle toward the ground. Raise or hoist, the forearm is vertical with one finger pointing up and drawing a small circle on the sky. Stop, the arm is extended palm down and moved back and forth horizontally. Gantry travel, the arm is extended forward with the hand open and slightly raised, making a pushing motion in the direction of travel. Trolley travel, the hand is closed and the thumb points in the direction of travel. The hand is jerked horizontally. Move slowly. The other hand is placed in front of the normal signal. Emergency stop. Both arms are extended, palms down, and moved back and forth horizontally. Whenever possible, the signal person should signal using bare hands. However, in cold weather, your signal person may need to wear gloves. Although light-colored or high-visibility gloves are preferred, the signal person may wear dark gloves as long as the crane operator can clearly see the hand signals being communicated. If you are ever unclear as to what is being signaled at any time, stop the crane and ask for clarification. If anyone signals a stop, even someone not in your ground crew, do so immediately. The two-way radio is not for general conversation. It's to be used for operation communication only. Clear communication is the key to smooth and safe operations.